This bottle has embossing, as you can see when we rotate on the top here, and we need to line our orientation up so it triggers off the embossing. As we rotate the bottle, you can see that the laser over here is not changing color and remains green. We're going to show you how to set this up to trigger off the embossing. So the first thing you can do is move the bar. So find the point that you want to trigger off and we're using front orientation. You can slide this bar anywhere up or down the length of your bottle. You can use a piece of label or backing paper to see where exactly your light is triggering off. So here we can see we're triggering on the very edge of the embossing. Now our light is still green. So what we have to do here is actually move it a bit closer towards the embossing until it changes and remains a solid orange color. Our light has now turned orange and we can see it's triggering. Off this point of the embossing, we have a very clear, crisp light. And if we now rotate this bottle around, it remains green until it hits the embossing and triggers as it initially hits the embossing every time. how to line a label up with the designated point you've chosen which in our case is the embossing on the front of this bottle so if you look across to your dial panel we have the orientation on which is the middle dial we've just chosen a random spot in the orientation for the moment so right now it's actually sitting uh, just below the five point and we're going to show you where the label lands so just apply your label as normal So it applied quite quickly and you can see that it is to the left side of the embossing. So if we hold that bottle up for you, it is way too early. It actually needs to start much later. So it needs to move across to the right. Now to do that, we need to increase our dial. So we're going to increase the dial quite dramatically and we're gonna put it up to the 10. So we're just on the 10 line here, which means we're starting it a little bit later. And we're going to see where this label now lands. So you can see compared to the previous label, this label has started much later. Uh, it's slightly over twice the amount of uh, distance from the first label. It's also quite nicely lined up with the bottle. Now, if we just remove that first label for you, we're going to over label the label, which we have just done. So we're placing our bottle back in. We're pointing our trigger point, which is the embossing towards the roof. This allows the orientation to have a little bit of lead in time. And we're just going to apply another label here. We haven't changed the orientation dial and we've just placed a second label directly over the top of the first label. So if we just show you that here, I've placed a second label over the top of that first label, which is nicely lined up with our embossing and screen print on here. And we're happy with that position on the orientation dial. So we would leave that where it is. We're not going to change that any longer. And we know that if we place this bottle back on, pointing the orientation anywhere towards the ceiling or away from the orientation to give it some lead in time, go ahead and apply our label. We're going to get the same consistent result, which is lining up with that embossing on the bottle. So here we're just going to apply a label we're happy with where our orientation is set up, so away we go and putting that label on. Now, if we weren't happy with the position of this label and for some reason we wanted it to start a bit further left, um, we would actually left if we hold the bottle upright for you. This is obviously the left way, which in terms of the orientation dial around here is going to mean decreasing where we have it. So if we want to go further left, each of these small white lines is approximately two millimetres. Um, so if we only need to go about two millimetres, we only need to move at a very small amount here. So we're just going to put another label over the top of this bottle. And this one will now start a little earlier than the current label. So you can see here, we've moved it fractionally. So the label over the top is a little bit further to the left. Likewise, if we actually decided from the first label position that we indeed wanted it to start a little bit later, perhaps we want it to line up a little bit more with this D here, then all we have to do is come across to 
the dial and increase that by one or two white lines. So we're just going past the 10 in this example, the 10 being our, our happy, perfect position. And we're just going to apply another label here and show you where that lands. And here you can see we've gone a couple of white lines. So we've increased um, rather dramatically by just over a centimeter here. And it is now starting much further over to the right. So if we just remove both of these labels, I just want to show you how with this dial, it's got quite a lot of sensitivity in it. So we'll just remove these really quickly for you. Lucky our labels are nice and removable. We'll just pop that back on there. Now, if I just put the dial exactly on the 10, so it's the orange 10, we apply a label. Now, all I'm going to do here is move it back by one white line. So I'm decreasing by one small white line. It's a very fractional move and applying one more label. And you can see here, that it's gone significantly further back. We're about half a centimetre back, which is more in line with the embossing. You can actually move it back a full white line or you can move it back half a white line. These are very small increments. The reason it is so sensitive is because the large range of diameters, which you can label with our machines, that ranges from a small syringe all the way up to a very large protein container, which is why the orientation dial needs to have such a huge range of sensitivity. Some of the issues that you might experience with your orientation sensor can include the following. If you're trying to apply labels and no labels are being applied, you may have the lever on the left-hand side of your machine in the upright position. So we'll show you what that looks like. That is the position for when you thread the labels. And if you're trying to apply a label, nothing's happening. Now, when that's down and you've made sure that the lever is down, if you're still having issues, um, that may be because your orientation sensor is not set up correctly. So your orientation sensor may be on and it may be where you think you need it to be. But if you're trying to apply a label and nothing happens, it's because your light is not detecting anything. So right now it's running over a blank area and not triggering off of anything at all. Likewise, if you're finding the labels are applying in positions where you don't want them to be, this is most likely because your orientation has triggered off of something else entirely. So for example, if you place your bottle in and it's already triggered on the orientation, it will immediately apply your label. That's why it's important to keep orientation triggers out of the way. It does need a small lead in time. We often recommend facing the trigger point towards the ceiling, but realistically, you can put your bottle or container down anywhere that is not triggering that orientation, which in many bottles, like this case, is about 90% of the bottle. So as long as it's not directly on top of an exact trigger like it was before, like this, you're going to get consistent labels. You may find sometimes that a particular container of bottles has uh, some dust in it, or it has an inconsistency in the seam, or it may have some specks of something else. This laser sensor is incredibly sensitive and it can pick up on those and it will detect as if they are actually part of the embossing. In that case, you'll find that labels are being applied at random. You can test whether there's something wrong with your bottle by simply putting the same bottle on twice and trying to apply a label in the same position. You should see a repeat in the exact same position and if you are indeed finding it to be applying in the incorrect position as per your other bottles, that is either because something is on top of the bottle that shouldn't be like some dust or it may be because the bottle itself is out of round. On the bottom of most bottles and containers, you're going to find some markings. Generally, you'll be able to find the mold number. Uh, so in here, we can see there is a number 18. Not sure if you'll be able to catch that on camera, but there is a 1-8 in here. That's most likely the mold number, which means that this is the 18th bottle in that mold. Some molds may have 50, 60, 100, or even more mold numbers, and every mold is unique, especially when it comes to glass. So there are some inconsistencies, which may mean that on a much smaller container or on a not very round container, your labels may be applied within a couple of millimeters of each other rather than exactly where they need to be. If you do notice this happening, we're always happy to take some of your bottles in and test and we can get back to you with results.